threes were wide open. They were butt naked. So you didn't see any wide open threes last night. You saw maybe one or two or three. I, I saw Kevin Love get two. Right? But you saw a team not shoot the ball well from the three-point line. You saw Denver dominate with points in the paint. And you saw Denver dominate with rebounds. So when I go back to people trying to argue with me about, man, yeah, Miami's just as talented as Denver. I'm like, no, they're not. Talent is not the same. Talent is not the same. No. Because – Denver is more talented, and when Denver puts it together and plays with a sense of urgency, that margin you saw last night is the gap between but can, the but two. But can we also just, like, admire for a second what Jamal Murray and Jokic did last night? You know, the whole thing about the bubble, I'm going back to the bubble because Jokic was an emerging star, but Jamal Murray played out of his mind, right? And they came back in consecutive series, down 3-1. They were the cardiac kids. Jokic did not play his best bat. Like, Murray elevated. Jokic did not. Right? And that's why I've been suspicious of Jokic. I wanted to see him do this because then Jamal Murray got hurt last couple postseasons, wasn't available. So I wanted to see when they get back and they're healthy, can Jokic elevate the way Jamal Murray elevated and can Jamal Murray continue to do what he did in the bubble? Man, that's what happened last night. You had two superstars. You know, uh, Jokic is a superstar. Jamal Murray's a star. But when the moment is big, Jamal Murray becomes a superstar. And Jokic was just insane. When you have two dudes playing on that level, good luck. If, if one team has Shaq and Kobe or, or, you know, LeBron and Wade or Jordan and Pippen, good luck. That's what these two dudes were last night. It was impossible. What were you going to do? It was impossible. So, Key, that's what I was talking about before, man. You and I both been rapping about it. So, last night I'm sitting there saying, okay, Denver last night shot 27.8% from the three-point line. Your other max player has been a bum. Yeah, poor. And I, I love MPJ. That's my dude. Mm. He max guy. He can barely shoot. Not a max guy, a J guy. Yeah, but, uh, but and Christian Braun comes off the bench and gives you energy and gives you hustle face and gives you points, right? Okay. And he's a winner. And then all of a sudden, like you see that margin. And so you're saying to yourself, wait. Denver's still not even reaching their potential. Michael Porter Jr., the third best player, is not playing well at all in this series, and they still won convincingly. Yeah, yeah, but when you look at it, what was the one thing, the X factor in game two that we talked about most? Everybody talked about, oh, Jokic, 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 40 points. We talked about the assist game. Mm -hmm. Now you got a dude coming out with the triple-double, and then you got Murray with the triple-double. You add those assists in, and people forget a lot of times, Jay, those assists lead to points, whether it's a mm -hmm. hockey assist or not. They lead to points. So when you add the point total, that the actual player gets plus the assist or the hockey assist. That's how you thrive. That's how guys like this are able to, to, to do the things that he's able to do and contribute to his team where if guys aren't shooting the ball well in certain starters, the other max players and all that, but everybody else is able to chip in because he's the major contributor by dishing out the ball. Then Murray getting 10 assists. I, look, you could just tell – that they was getting ready to open up a can on them, especially especially once they got to that fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And, Keith, I mean, first ever player to drop 32, 21, and 10 in the NBA Finals game. He, they just, For Jokic. We just showed a stat on ESPN, too, Jay. And he's really tall. In the history of the NBA playoffs, there have been uh, uh, five total 30-point, 20-rebound, 10-assist triple-doubles. So basically 30-point triple-doubles, but with at least 20 boards, right? One each by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Wilt Chamberlain. And keep in mind, when Wilt was playing, the pace of play, they got up so many shots, there were lots of opportunities, not only for points, but also for rebounds, especially because shooting percentages weren't that high from outside the paint. So there are many more opportunities to do it in Wilt's day. That's why his rebound and Bill Russell's rebound numbers were super. 50 rebounds in a game, stuff like that. 30 rebounds in a game. One each for those guys. Three for Jokic so far. Playing in this era. Three for yeah, Jokic. I mean, you you could make the case that Jokic is the best offensively skilled big ever to play the game. Yeah. Ever when you add the, the pass. Like, I, yeah, I, you know, it, it, that's always hard for me to say as a, as a hooper because I feel like watching Hakeem Olajuwon, that dude was so skilled. His footwork was so different. But, like, the passing and, like, he's a master of leveraging angles. Like, you know, it is his shot-making ability around the rim, the floater game, the hook shot game, the up and the under game, his ability, like, to pass out of double teams, his ability to be patient. I mean, the, the dude's shooting 55% from the field, damn near 50% from the three-point line. I mean, he's 
leading the NBA in the postseason in points, rebounds, and assists. There, there's always a, a sinner. Yeah, there's always a good chance that whoever's the best at the present moment is the most skillful because they build on the skills of previous generations. You're not saying he's the greatest. In other words, in his era, he's towering over everyone more than Kareem did say. But you're saying just in an p- absolute sense, set. when you look at the tape, you say, yeah, he has more refined skill. But what's crazy to me about that stat we just showed about the 30-point, 20-board, 10 assists is – in the history of the game, only two dudes have done it once. This dude's done it three times now. Yo, can I tell you the best part about it, Key? So, mm-hmm. Mark Jackson last night, do you hear what MJ said? MJ said, he reminds me of an old dude at the playground who used to shoot the same shot over me with a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, He's so a grown man, man playing with kids. Uh, man yeah. with cigarettes in his YMCA mouth. YMCA game. Yeah. Blowing it yeah, out, just you, giving you when buckets. You start to- when you start to break him all the way down and his skill set and how he moves and stuff like that, he, that's just how he looks. There's nothing you, – you, you got to really love basketball to appreciate what he does because he's out there torn around with one hand. He, he got one um, – he did one pass, Jay. I don't remember exactly what quarter it was, but – you talking came. about the one from game two where he caught that no, thing with last one? Night. Oh, last, no, night. Last, last night. night. Last night. Yeah. He wrapped it around underneath the layup, but it didn't. He did it with one hand, man. and he had it up in the air, kind of waving around beforehand. I was like, come on, man. See, you. You You talking about he, when he faked it, the three and then drove to the to the, to the the basket? No, he passed it, though. There it go, right there. Oh, that yeah, one, yeah, that yeah, one yeah. right there. He, he did another one in I game two like, where he literally oh, caught God. a pass with one hand in the air and just literally – Touched it down to somebody else below. Like this, the that's why I disagree with Key. I disagree. It's not fun to watch. I think think it's dope. I think even if you don't, if you're not into basketball, it's like a great defensive play in baseball. I feel like we just got to come out with more energy and effort, and um, that's correctable. That's on us as a as a group. No X's and O's can fix that. So you know, come out, dive on the floor, get loose balls, get defensive rebounds, and um, maybe just maybe it would have been a different game. Jay, you, you buy what he's selling? I mean, look, I'm never going to count out Miami, even though I think it's over. I think it's a wrap. That's counting them um, out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I could think it's over doesn't mean it's over. All right. You know what I'm saying? So, I, but the, the thing that, was, that we were just talking about during the break, though, it, it, I think a lot of Miami is momentum-like. Mm-hmm. It's how you allow them to play. So, in game two, you saw Max Struess find his rhythm very quick on miscues and miscommunication from mm-hmm. Denver, right? Mm-hmm. Which – they got rolling offensively. So you saw that. In the first two games, Denver contested Miami on 41% of their threes. Mm-hmm. Right? 41. Last night, they contested them on 61%. Made a difference. 61%. So when, you, when, you, when you're butt naked and you see the ball go in multiple times, you, you build a confidence. You get a rhythm. You know, you, you, you get that lather. Last night, it never, it never felt like Miami so you're saying was able they have to, to find that lather. They got to get open shots somehow early in the I game. Mean, Jimmy Butler had not an assistant game too, man. I mean, what do you have last night? Four, four. Yeah. So, I mean, you saw the defense collapse multiple times and Jimmy made the right reads and guys were knocking down shots. You didn't see a lot of a lot, a lot of wide open, uncontested shots last night. No. And it looked like they was taking wild shots, right? They was just it was it was almost like they was Desperate. shooting the ball, some, like just shooting it, not not setting their feet, not taking their time, not lining things up. They just was doing stuff out there like they was playing playground basketball. And when you do that and you're missing the shots doing that sort of stuff, how do you expect to win the game? That's just undisciplined. So and look, Gabe Vincent and Max Schuster were combined three of 17 last night. So, I mean, Gabe Vincent, we talk about Gabe Vincent making anywhere next year between 9 to 10 to $11 million annually mm-hmm. a year. Mm-hmm. Right? Max Struess, same with his contract. So, when you don't have that three-point shooting, then you're asking Jimmy Butler – to do it all, and he was missing chippies last night because of the time he's pouring in. And he had 28, but still, it's like him and Bam, two men is, can't beat five, dog. Is this why you? Is this why you talk about the undrafted player situation, Jay? Where you saw last night the undrafted players become undrafted players last night? Is this why where you got guys that are the guys on the other team doing what they're supposed to do? But it's just not that, though, Key. Like, think about the size that all these guys have. Like, I wrote it down. Like, No, I, I, like, I know it, that. It, but, you know, at some point. Size and talent, you, right? So you Yeah, got, but at some point, that talent. That's what I'm saying. Lack of talent shows up. That's what I'm saying. So the size and the talent thing are, are two of the biggest themes for me. Like, 
you got Michael Porter Jr. Like the, the rebounding margin, they got pummeled on the glass. Pummeled on the glass. So in points in the paint, they got destroyed with points in the paint. Similar to game one. After a while, like that, there's a wear and tear effect on your body when you have to battle like that, man. Like that, that translates to me to the perimeter because it takes away from your legs. So when you got Michael Porter Jr. out there 16, you got Jokic out there, you know, 6'11. You got Aaron Gordon out there 6'8. You saw him get multiple post-ups last night. You know, you try to combat that with Kevin Love. You got Christian Braun coming off the bench, who's six four and a half, six five. He can play at that same energy level. He was right? huge he last night. He was huge night. last night. But because that it was he still body a game. Jimmy Butler one play. When he got in the game, it was still a game, and the Heat were within striking distance. And then you blinked, and he had like you know eight points in how I don't know how many minutes, and it was it wasn't a game anymore. They, all they really needed is a little contribution on the Nuggets from someone else at that point, and it was a wrap, and it was a wrap. Meantime, Jimmy Butler, you understand why he points to effort, right? Because you want to say that there are things within your control that you can do to win the game. You're not going to sit there and be like, ah, they're just too good for us. Why'd they lack effort? Listen to him being asked and answer this question. This is Jimmy Butler after the game. You mentioned the effort. Why do you think it was so lacking tonight? I don't know. I can't answer that. Uh, maybe, you know, we're at home. We think we did something. I, I don't know. It just can't happen. It won't happen again. And it starts with myself. Um, you know, I got to lock in on a defensive end. I got to go up and, and, and get loose balls. So um, I think if I start playing and doing that, then everybody else has to follow suit. That had to be Nick Friedel asking that question, yeah, right? Definitely, yeah. The, that was Nick. That Unmistakably voice? Nick Friedel. I'm, Why do you think Jimmy, it lacks uh, effort? <laughs> how that question is. Uh, he listen. He's got a good voice. Why are you mocking his voice? It's a good voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were saying like James Jay. Earl Jones out there, man. That's right. <laughs> Asking questions. Yo, but I mean, I mean, Jimmy ain't wrong. Jamal Murray had twenty in the first half. Yeah, twenty. But it was it was all pick and roll action. So. I don't know why they wouldn't just blitz, pick, and roll and force the ball out of his hands because when Jamal Murray started to get going, he single-handedly allowed Jokic to also find that rhythm by being aggressive offensively. Man, you can't have two dudes like that. When two, but you look at the, at the Nuggets roster and you go, well, actually, yeah, Jokic is an MVP caliber player, but they don't really have – in the playoffs, now throughout his career, Jamal Murray's an MVP caliber player. Cut the head off the snake, right? Right, Have it's a two-headed snake. Him? It's a two-headed yeah, snake. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, like, when, even when Jokic gets his, if Jamal Murray doesn't get his, you feel like you have a chance to win the game. Jokic was huge on both ends, actually, in Denver's game three win, although I thought his defense in the first half was in. But Miami shot three of 19. That's 16% when contested by Jokic, either as a primary or help defender. That includes out of bio one of ten. Well, Bam got Bam got shots, man. He got he was shots. Four, he just didn't but knock but him with down. Jokic as the primary or help defender, you're saying that Bam he got, got shots. a little. Bam that Jokic's shots. numbers look a little <laughs> lucky. Bam got shots, man. <laughs> I agree with that actually in the first half, especially on offense. Jokic's teammates shot ten of fifteen. That's twenty two points for it equaled off his passes. Eight of fourteen off his teammates' passes. That's what Jokic shot. He shot. 50%, 7 of 14 on contested shots, 5 of 7 when left open. I mean, is it over? Is it too? When you have a Jokic doing that and then Jamal Murray's got a 30-point triple-double, is it over for well, the Jamal Heat? Jamal Murray's the reason why they won the game. Mm -hmm. Like, today you're going to hear everybody talk about Jokic, but like we talked about before, cutting the head off the snake. You saw that in game two when Jamal Murray wasn't able to flourish, even though Jokic had 40, Denver lost, right? But one of the things that nobody's going to talk about today that Michael Malone did as it relates to strategy last night, they screened Murray before the offense even started. So they got him in motion and action before the offense started, which allowed him that 20 points in the first half. It got him away from Jimmy Butler, and it made the job for Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is one of the key reasons, and he talked about it post-game, where he's like, I got to be better. I got to bring more intensity defensively because he knows that that matchup is the driver of rhythm. And – it allows Denver to play at their best. Denver's not at their best when Jamal Murray doesn't play at a high level. You know Jokic is going to give you buckets all day. But when you allow Jokic and Jamal Murray to have a triple-double 
You're not gonna have a chance to win. It's a that little game. bit, isn't it? A little like it reminds me of Shaq and Kobe. People are like Shaq, Kobe's actually the, like when Shaq was in his prime. Kobe's the reason because you would see when Kobe went off, the other team had no shot. But I always thought it was a little unfair to Shaq because Shaq every game was 40 and 15 and 38, and then Kobe's would be a little more up and down at first. I'd be like, wait, hold on. Why isn't Shaq getting more credit? Because when Kobe is up, they win. So then Kobe gets the credit, but Shaq is always up. Doesn't that, doesn't that take some credit away from Jokic to say, well, Murray's the reason because when he pops, they win if, if Jokic is always popping? No, because it's not tennis. It's not, a, it's not an individual sport. It's a team sport. I mean, I, I, for media sakes, we probably get lost. and It takes some pop away from Jokic, but it don't. At the end of the day, Jokic is going to be a two-time MVP. You can make a case he should be a three-time MVP. And if they win, he's going to be a champion. Same with Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray, one thing is for sure. If he keeps this up, he's going to be always remembered by sports fans as one of those special athletes who consistently was his best when his best was called yeah, for. Stephen A. Jay, put him in the so, same sentence, though, with Steph Curry, and I can't do that yet. He played he, he did <laughs> no, it yesterday. Not as a, but, but when yeah, it matters yeah, yeah, most, yeah, he like, plays. He's slow down. Jay, let's slow down on that. So so right now, if the, if the uh, championship ended today, it goes to Jokic, right? Yes. Is there anything that Murray could do between now and the ending to get the MVP trophy? No. Nothing? I mean, even if Murray exploded for multiple 40-point games, yeah, maybe. But this dude is leading the postseason in points, rebounds, and assists. And the thing that's mind-boggling about that could be the first time it's ever done. But what if he NBA takes a history. dip, though? What if he, what if he takes? Well, it doesn't look like he's gonna take a dip. But <laughs> well, hey, he's six eleven. Who's stopping him? I, I, it, Jay, he's six eleven, but he doesn't look six eleven. He looks nine feet tall and long, and just he's <laughs> taller than everybody out there. So you know like, why it's gonna go so to Jokic big. no matter what. The offense goes through Jokic too. Look, how, look, look at him on the block, right on the on the. <laughs> like, just look how he looks. Big old guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but like, you know why it's gonna go to Jokic too? Because unfortunately, there's no postseason MVP, right? And so because of what Jokic has done throughout these playoffs, I think if it's even, even if Murray goes off for 40 points in multiple games, it, it, people want to, are going to want to somehow recognize what Jokic has been doing throughout these entire playoffs. Plus it's going to be a makeup for him not winning the MVP. But he's yeah. not American. You're, look, you're looking at, you're looking at Joel. <laughs> That's a good point. You're, Give it to Murray. You're looking at Joel and and you're looking at Jokic saying, okay, like Jokic is better. Yeah. yeah like, there yeah. should be, by the way, there should it was, be a postseason MVP. It was like a somewhat MVP. of a debate. Well, Literally clearly. on this show a month and a half ago, yep. and I don't hear it being a debate anymore. No, which I'm is not shocking. debating that. No, not debating it. What, what, what's not? What's not? Jay? Who would you rather have, Jokic or Joel Embiid? I would rather me personally because I want both ends of the floor all the time, and I understand. Don't tell me anything about his health. I don't want to hear that. Well, why not? That's factored into it. I know, but Jay, come on, man. We just talking about. Pure but, we're, but we're not though. It's the same way. If we were just talking about that, then you would pick the Clippers every single year. Why don't and you may, pick the well, Clippers? Jay, let me ask because you this. they're never healthy. If Jimmy Butler never leaves Jay, Philadelphia, on, no, are we what having a different conversation? Excuse me. On, if now, Butler seriously. never leaves Philly, are we thinking differently about Embiid because he's maybe won a title already, you know? Sure. So th- a lot of that is this. You, got, you want to see guys how they perform in these moments, right? And Jokic is getting the opportunity to show, and Embiid has not been this deep yet. Yeah, I, I take both ends of the floor. I'm sorry. I, I just... What I'm and seeing now, I got to take Jokic. Not, I got to take Jokic. It's not because he's not American, because neither is Embiid. So there you go. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.